Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Truth Report for this week. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus tells us that prior to his return, there will be wars and rumors of wars. And certainly that's evident today. But it will be increasingly evident as that applies to Israel. Israel has many enemies and they, they will be coming against Israel. And the, the scriptures have a lot to say about those wars that Israel's involved in. And one of the passages that's often referred to as uh, regarding the wars that Israel faces is from, from Psalm 83. Psalm 83 is basically a prayer of Asaph. It's not a prophecy in the normal sense of the prophetic word. But it's a prayer that Asaph offers to God concerning the enemies that um, Israel faces, which are thereby the enemies of God, as he makes it clear. But he has a specific military objective in mind with this war. <clears throat> all conflicts, all um, endeavors at war have a military objective in mind. I say that, and yet, yet there's probably an exception to that with this present administration that we face. Uh, it's hard to define what an objective is when you're leading from behind. But listen to what Asaph prays. Psalm 83, verse 1. O God, O God, do not keep silent. Be not quiet, O God. Be not still. See how your enemies, your enemies, your enemies, see how your enemies are astir, how your foes, how your foes rear their heads. So the, the, the enemies are of God. They're raising their hype. They're conspiring against God. With cunning, they conspire against your people. So he's saying whoever is against your people is against you. That's the obvious connection. With cunning, they conspire against your people. They plot against those that you cherish, the people of God that you cherish. Those who come against the people of God that you cherish are coming against God. That's the connection of the dots right there. No question about it. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation, uh, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. If you're coming against Israel, you're coming against a God. And, and Asaph's prayer is direct against those who are coming against Israel. With one mind, they plot together, they form an alliance against you. And there, once again, is the, uh, the unmistakable co connection between those who come against Israel, uh, they are likewise coming against God. Now, he prays, mentioning a number of nations here, all nations uh, that actually surround Israel today, but they have one military objective in mind. It's a spiritual objective as well, and this is it. It's found in verse 16. Cover for, uh, Asaph prays, uh, prays, cover their faces with shame, the enemies of God, the enemies of Israel. Israel. Cover their faces with shame so that men will seek your name O Yahweh, the purpose of defeat, the objective of this military operation is that men may seek the name of Yahweh. The enemies would seek his name. They would know it. They would seek it. They would recognize it. Verse 17, may they ever be ashamed and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. The enemies of God, the enemies of Israel. Let them know that you, whose name is Yahweh, let them know that you, whose name is Yahweh, that you alone are the most high over all the earth. <clears throat> Yahweh, the term Yahweh, it's translated Lord. I've told, uh, mentioned this many times before. It's translated Lord with, in all capital letters. This is used in the Old Testament over 6,800 times. 6,800 times, and it's translated Lord. It's, it's Yahweh. And the whole purpose in defeating of, of Israel's enemies so that the enemies will exalt and recognize the name of Yahweh. Now that's not in conflict. Be assured that's not in conflict with Jesus. Yahweh has bestowed upon Jesus his name. Jesus is the incarnation of Yahweh. Uh, a classic example of that is Philippians chapter 2, verse 11. God has exalted him, namely Jesus, given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow on heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Yahweh. There's no mistake about it.
So there's no conflict between the two. The one is a manifestation of the other. Jesus is the manifestation of Yahweh the Father. I and the Father are one, Jesus said. And the enemies will recognize that. And it appears that the enemies recognize that even before, even before Israel does. We'll talk more about that later. But be reminded, be aware that the goal as far as God is concerned and God's prophets and God's intercessors is that the name of Yahweh will be exalted as a result of these military conflicts. It will be magnified. Oh, magnify Yahweh with me and let us exalt his name together. And that's the truth. <laughs>